listening to the nation's premier source on health, beauty, and wellness. Detroit Nation with Dr. B. Elaine Artiberry. Lifestyle Driven. Driven with our emphasis on health, beauty, and wellness. I am so delighted today that our guest is Cassandra Spratling. She is a writer for the Free Press in the Life section, but her articles have really appeared in every section of the Free Press. And I met Cassandra a couple of weeks ago riding her bike in front of my house. <laughs> it was fantastic to meet you. I'm so glad you're here today. Welcome. Good morning, Dr. Elaine. I'm excited to be here as well. And I loved meeting you as, as my brother and I were biking along. One of the things I love about biking is that you meet so many interesting people up close and personal. And you were just wonderful to welcome us into your your home. And, right. And, so. and I gave you some water. It was hot. Yes, yes, <laughs> it was in the yes, summer. Yes, it was hot yes, that day. Yes, yes, you guys yes. looked a little parched. I'm so we, glad you're here today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So tell me a little bit about yourself, about your background. I know you're a native Detroiter. You uh, grew up here. Tell me yeah. about yourself. Yes, this, this is home. I um, grew up initially, and my early years were in the Jeffries Projects, which are no longer the area now. Where were they? They were the, on um, right off the Lodge Freeway. It's now the, the complex that's named for all these Motown uh, stars, the Miracles oh, of Boulevard. Okay. Uh, it's right over there uh, near near the Lodge and Grand River. Did the movie stars and the, and the singing stars used to live over there? Um, the Supremes used to live in the Brewsters. So a lot right. of them came out of the Brewsters, which was a different um, okay. public housing project. But um, later in my childhood, we moved to Northwest um, Detroit. Okay. And I'm a graduate of McKenzie High School. Oh wow! Proud to say, go McKenzie. <laughs> yes, go Big Mac is what we call it. Oh, Big Mac, that's Big cute. Mac, yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, McKenzie is no longer there. Oh. Um, the school was uh, torn down, but it's now um, an elementary middle school where I actually do some some volunteer work. Oh, and that's interestingly, nice. it's come full circle. Yeah, huh? yeah. Interestingly, I ran into my high school counselor last night at a, a birthday celebration for a woman named Millie Landrum. Um, and it was just exciting to, oh, to see him. Nice. That was a very special moment. Oh, and uh, nice. after um, McKinsey, I went to Michigan State University. Mm -hmm. I'll forgive and, you. And, but yeah, I also you have, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, my graduate degree is from the University oh, of Michigan. Oh, okay, then there's more love now. <laughs> <laughs> I love you now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's, that's my background. I've always been interested in, in writing and um, was just thrilled when I had the opportunity to start writing for the Detroit Free Press. So how did that come about? How did you start writing for the Free Press? Well, um, I had an internship at the Detroit Free Press um, shortly. Um, actually, it was while I was at the University of Michigan. Okay. Um, a couple of the editors from the Free Press came to talk to journalism students. And, um, and I was hired first as an intern and um, later after graduating, I was offered uh, a job there. Mm. So I have been there ever since, yeah. You have this particular drive and passion about health and mm -hmm. about people with color. Tell me about that. What, what does that mean for you? Okay, well, first of all, I see um, the opportunity to write for the Detroit Free Press as um, a wonderful opportunity to do what I love, which is to write. Um, at the same time, however, I realized that um, I wouldn't have this position if it were not for people who, um, who made a way for uh, people of color to work at places like the Free Press. Mm -hmm. So it is a um, special privilege and an honor for me to be able to write sometimes about um, communities of color because I see it as a way of saying thank you. Um, thank you for making it possible for me to be here. Thank you for making it possible for other people of color to be here. But also because, um, you know, our communities are an important part of the fabric of this nation. And when we don't cover communities of color, then we really are not covering the nation in its totality. So. You have a real sense of responsibility about this, like personal, it's a personal responsibility and it seems to be a professional responsibility. Do you think articles about health and, and things related to the fitness of African Americans and people of color are ignored? Um, I think that it's getting better. Okay. I think that, that it's getting better. I think certainly that um, actually for a long time, health stories in general have not been as important as they should be, in my opinion. But uh, truthfully, if we don't have our health, we have nothing. 
And um, one of the things that I appreciate about this series is that it does offer um, an opportunity to talk about um, health and wellness in a way that's fun. And oh, very I fun. think that um, people, um, sometimes when you think about health, you think about going to the doctor or and the white the coat and, right. or going something that's uh, difficult. That's a big effort. Right. That's a big effort, and it doesn't have to be. It, it should and it should and can be fun, and I think that um, communities of color and 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 people in general are getting that. I I love your messages. I mean, they're all about. It, it's not this condoning. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. It's it seems to be about lifestyle. What do you think that people need to do from a lifestyle perspective to change their health? What are some of the things people need to do? Um, I think that one of the well, let me just say first of all that the series we have this hashtag called Seize the Days. Yes. And I think that really is what it's all about. It's about recognizing that basically you have a choice. Seize the days or cease the days. Cease like end. Like end the days. Wow, okay. Exactly. I mean, I strongly believe that that, that it's important to, to seize this time that we have um, to live the, the healthiest and happiest that you can because, you know, this is all we have, really. Um and I think that that's the, the main message that I try to get through with this series. And I think that what I have appreciated about this series is that people um, who have responded to it get that. Um, people have been, you know, who, who people have written me, people have um, emailed and called and said, hey, I'm not going to bike as much as you bike. But I tell you what, I got my <laughs> bike out for the first time and biked around the Isn't neighborhood. Isn't that remarkable? That's wonderful. You know, um, people who were like sitting at home not thinking about biking, right? Now are exactly. pulling out the bike, right? And had the bike, right? H- had the bike. I mean, I I know people who've had bikes for years. Oh yeah, they're sitting in the garage. Uh, right. Exactly, exactly. I'm 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 very proud of it and very very supportive of the fact that you've been able to motivate people. And I want to talk about sort of your countdown to mm-hmm. sixty. I mean, it's it's you know when I first read about it, I thought it's sort of like a bucket list, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. it's really this whole thing that's culminating very soon. So tell me about that about your 60th birthday okay, and okay. what you've been doing to, to sort of get there. Okay, so um, I, I tell you, that this whole idea started um, at around the time of my last birthday. Okay. When I turned 59, I um, spent a weekend in Washington, D.C. with my oldest daughter, Yewande, and I had such a good time, and I thought, you know what? Why do we have to set aside a weekend or a certain time to have a good time and to live life in a full and enjoyable and have an way. Enjoyable we- right, time, exactly. Right. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to make this a year-long commitment um, to do things to live healthier and happier, to, to, um, to bike more, to, um, to, to, to walk, to learn to swim, which is something you- that I mentioned to my editor, and then I was, like, afraid to do, and she's like, no, 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 you got to put that down. So between 59 and 60, one of your commitments was to learn to swim? Was to learn to swim, yes. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. And, and it has really, um, it's, it's been a blessing. I've been taking um, classes at the at the downtown mm-hmm. Y. Um, a teacher there named Lori Trout, who is excellent, and I think it's really funny that her last name is Trout. That's like so cute. Fish. It's like a fish, right? <laughs> and I'm so proud of you for accomplishing this. Tell me what else is on your list. Okay, um, I, I'm, one of my goals um, was to bike a um, hundred miles. Okay, and um, my brother, who you met when right. we were together, um, I had actually decided I I we I biked um, eighty miles um, as a part of the Wayne State ride earlier this year. And I thought, okay, that's good enough. I'm not going to do it. You know, it's, it's, it, it incorporated a metric century. So I was happy with that. Mm-hmm. But my brother said, no, you made a commitment wow. to readers that so you're going to do 100 miles. So you're going to do 100 miles. He was so like that? He was like that, yes. So he um, and an, another friend of mine, um, Cheryl Rulak, and I um, planned a 100-mile um, bi- bike ride um, around Metro Detroit one day and we did that um but i have to tell you that um the biggest the, the one of the most gratifying um um events mm-hmm. for this countdown was something that was not even initially planned um i heard about the bike ride from selma to montgomery we, alabama i really want to talk about that i okay. read about that um we'll be right back okay great <laughs> you are listening to detroit nation with dr v elaine Ardemir. Hey.
Drivers of Change, showcasing to the world the innovators from Detroit, Michigan, and the nation that are shaping the country. Today's driver of change is Umberto Veronese, an Italian surgeon who in the early 60s pioneered the concept of conserving women's breasts. Historically, the way breast cancer had been managed was to remove the breast and to take the muscles of the chest and leaving women without cancer but significantly debilitated. Um, Veronese pioneered a technique called a lumpectomy or partial mastectomy and lymph node dissection followed by radiation that actually revolutionized revolutionize the way we treat women with breast cancer, allowing them to maintain their breast and to have an ongoing high quality of life and to improve their cosmetic and, and cosmetic and, and uh, personal outcome. The other thing that he's pioneered more recently is intraoperative radiation therapy, where women no longer necessarily have to get seven weeks of radiation, but simply get radiation intraoperatively. At the time of surgery, um, they get all their radiation delivered while the surgery is going on, um, the surgery is concluded, and in many cases don't require the need to come back for weeks and weeks of radiation. This is wildly popular popular in Europe, catching on a little bit in the U.S., but I felt in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and all our survivors and, breast ca and women who are undergoing breast cancer that we should honor the people that have really made a significant difference in changing the lives of women for breast cancer. So that's why we picked that today. I'm back with Cassandra Spratling, and we're talking about her Seize the Day hashtag, as well as her commitment to her 60th birthday and accomplishing these lifestyle goals, which she's been chronicling um, in her series in the Detroit Free Press. But we, I'm going to digress, because right before the break, we were talking about the march to Selma which is something you have been discussing and, and talking about. And I, I interrupted you for our, our, our moment, but let's get back to that. Okay. So um, shortly after I committed to do um, a series of, um, involved in my countdown to 60, I learned about um, a, a, a bike group, um, the Montgomery Bicycle Association, that had planned a, um, a bike ride from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act. I was so beyond Bikers excited. Now. Not yes, walking. Exactly. Biking. I was beyond excited to learn that there was a bike ride that was um, intended to mark the 50th anniversary. This is interesting. So, exactly. So I contacted um, a few of my um, biking buddies, um, again, Cheryl Rulak, um, Jackie Fulbright, um, Michelle Your bike Bradley, crew. Yeah, my bike crew, and said, hey, we got to do this. We have to do this. You have to participate, this. We right. have to do this, exactly. And what I loved about it, it was an opportunity to, to really do something that, that mattered to me, to combine my interest in fitness with my interest in um, honoring my ancestors. And so... Um, we drove to 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 Alabama and with joined, your bikes. yes, with our oh. bikes, oh, wow. and joined uh, hundreds of other cyclists who had come from all over the country to do this ride. And one of the things that that um, that really uh, it was it was challenging because I was writing and tweeting as I was uh, oh. writing. But one of the um, many um, inspiring things is that we stopped at the um, gravesite of Viola Luizo, who was a um, a woman from Detroit um, who was killed by Klansmen uh, during that um, during the original um, march from from Selma to um, Montgomery. Mm -hmm. So it was really um, it was it was That's just very moving. very moving. Yes, to to be able to to write to 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 bike to write and to to pay. Uh, tribute to um, those everyday freedom fighters um, in our past. I am so impressed with your ability to sort of bend. You seem to have so much passion, like you really love what you do, and you've been able to blend in, in this series sort of your whole interest in passion and writing, your passion and fitness. I mean, what does it feel like to be to do exactly what you want to do? Uh, well, I have to say that it feels really great and sometimes it feels a little scary okay and I'll say a little scary because as a writer I'm not accustomed to being the subject 
I'm accustomed to writing about other people and what other people are doing. So I have to tell you, the first time that my picture appeared in the paper really big, I mean, yeah. I was just like totally freaked out. Like, why is this here? You know, but you um, do this all the time. <laughs> but it's for other people. It's right. for other people. You're not focusing exactly. on yourself. I'm not focused on myself. But um, so that's been like the the really. Um, strange thing I, okay. the thing that I've most had to um, to, to get kind of used overcome. to yeah. and, and overcome um, but other than that I have really um, I really appreciated it I um, appreciate my editor um, at the Free Press Nicole um, Avery Nichols who really um, pushed and supported the project because initially I just kind of mentioned it um, to her and another editor Julie Topping and they were like oh no you you're gonna do this you need to write about it and I was like well I was just gonna do it for me right, like your own bucket list right kind exactly of right. exactly um but they are the ones who, who really pushed and supported the series and I really um appreciate it it has been good um so, and so what have you learned from that experience putting yourself out there as a writer as the subject what have you personally learned I think it's it it's not so much learn, but it's um, kind of um, reinforced the intent, which was not to so much have this series be about me, but to say to um, our readers that, you know, I'm just like you. And if I can do these things, you can too. And no matter, no matter what age and stage you are, you too can seize the days. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, and that's been truly the most gratifying part of the series is hearing from people who have in fact, um, done that um i uh, occasionally do i know i know you've mentioned you've had um jason hall from slow roll on the show oh yes jason was a, he was one of my early guests uh, okay okay yeah. i've done slow roll um i have to say that i've come to love slow roll initially i was like what is this um why because it was slow <laughs> because it was incredibly slow for a biker yeah for a biker exactly <laughs> and the first time i went out i said i won't be back and then a friend of mine said, look, you got to do slow roll with a different attitude, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it is about enjoying the city, enjoying the people. Um, but, um, but, but one of the things that has happened on slow roll is that I've run into people or people have, you know, biked up to me and said, hey, aren't you the lady in the free press that's doing the biking series? I've been following you. You and, are and, resonating. And, and, and I've had people say, hey, I'm out here because of you. That has just been really, it's like I, I had not expected that to, I am um, so blown away about how this project has resonated with mm -hmm. so many people and really motivated people to make those lifestyle changes I I think it's I honor you I think it's tremendous well thank you one of the things I have um, appreciated too is that as a result of the series I've met so many other people who are doing great things in health <laughs> such as you Dr. <laughs> Elaine in this show I think it's really fantastic the more that we can get the word out about the importance of health and wellness, the better it is for communities of color and for all people, really. Um, I've met um, groups like Girl Trek, which is encouraging um, women to get out and walk. You know, it's a, it's a national effort, but um, Chrysantha Norwood is doing an outstanding job driving that message home locally. Um, there's a group um, called Dem Detroit Girls Run. Dem D E M D E M. Yes. Oh, how cute! And, and girls G I G I R L Z. Oh, Z. Z. Oh, how cute. Them Detroit Girls Run. Yes. Um, Summer Woods leads that effort. And there are, are, are women who are either running or walking, basically just saying, hey, get out there, um, uh, do that. Um, the group that meets downtown, um, run this town. Detroit. Oh, yeah, I heard about them. Yes. So, so that's been, I mean, it's, it's great to see that there are all over the city, all over Metro Detroit, there are are things going on to encourage people to get out to change and their do lifestyle. something. We'll be right back with Cassandra Spratling. You are listening to Detroit Nation with Dr. V. Elaine Arterberry, driving the nation in health, beauty, and wellness. This is Dr. Elaine Arterberry with Detroit Nation. We're here with Cassandra Spratling to talk about her series about seizing the day and her countdown to her 60th birthday and all the activities that have happened related to that. Um, this is a point in our show where we sort of ask our guests, it's, it's called the lifestyle driven moment. And it's where we ask our guests, what's the one thing they wanna tell the, our listening audience? The one thing that might have motivated them, one thing they believe in or something they think can help other people you, you know you've had tremendous help on this journey your own personal journey um what do you think you want to share with other people 
I about what your lifestyle, how your lifestyle can help them. Okay, I think that one of the, the main things that I've learned from doing the series or the message that I'd like to leave is that, is that people should know that you are in charge of your happiness. You are responsible for your happiness. And that's why I love the hashtag Seize the Days because it really is about being um, self-motivated and self uh, and, and responsible. So often we look for outside sources of motivation when really it's, it's inside. Mm -hmm. You got to find that thing inside you, that spirit inside you that motivates you to, to, to self-care, to take care of yourself um, physically, e emotionally, mentally. I think that's that's the key message. I think I think that's so true. We're so committed here at Detroit Nation to improving the health, wellness, um, and to talk about beauty and about how people sort of make that change, sort of that defining moment that helps you cross over and start pulling out that bike or start doing it. And I believe Detroit really does have a culture of health and wellness. We don't talk about it a lot. We talk about it a lot here. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad someone like you has taken the time and taken the energy to talk about it. And one of the things I like to ask you, because we collect quotes here at Detroit Nation, what is your favorite quote? My favorite quote is um, a quote from Marion Wright Edelman, the founder of the Children's Defense Fund. One of the things she says is that service is the rent you pay for a living. And um, I love that quote. I, I believe it. I, um, I, I think that we are all in this world to, um, to help somebody else. And, and that, that quote says it. Oh, I think that's beautiful. Do you think Detroit is ready to have a culture? You know, other cities are known for sort of their culture of health and lifestyle, Los Angeles, Seattle. Do you think Detroit can have that same kind of moniker, that same kind of resonating health community? you think it's here? Or you think it can be built? I think it can be built. Okay. And I think that we're on the way. I think that there are certainly a lot of cities that are um, far ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, but Detroit is certainly um, on its way. When I first started biking um, 10 years or so ago, it was rare to, to run into someone else or to, as I was biking to work, mm -hmm. for example. Now, um, I, you know, when, when the weather's good, I try to bike to work right. two or three times at least um, during the week. And I always run into other people biking to work. You know, and it's that's a nice um, thing to see happening. Now there are um, there there are lots more um, bike lanes around yeah, the city. So it's safer. It's 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 safer. It's not as safe as it should be. Um, unfortunately, there's still a lot of people who aren't accustomed to seeing cyclists on the road or who think that cyclists should be on the sidewalks, which no. is not true. No, they cyclists shouldn't. They should have, be, have, have rights. a right to be on the road, just like. Um, at the same time, cyclists need to be more aware as well of the importance of, of signaling, of being visible. It, one of the things that distresses me when I'm biking at night or even driving at night is seeing cyclists who are in dark clothing, no lights on their bike. Um, that's just foolish <laughs> and dangerous mm -hmm. for themselves as, as well as for for other um, people in the cars. Dr for, exactly. For, for other people. Um, yeah. So you think so Detroit's ready? I think Detroit is definitely ready. What do you think ready. needs to happen in the next five years in order to create a culture of health in this community? What kind of steps need to happen? Is it does the government have to come in? Do people have to mobilize? I, I mean, based on the res how your articles have resonated with this community, people have a desire. Mm -hmm. So where is it going to come from? I think it has. It, first of all, it, I think it has to come from the people. It always starts with the people, but it, but there does have to be um, government um, assistance. There has to be um, government and business um, a assistance. There has to be a kind of an, an infrastructure that supports the the uh, the building of of bike lanes that um, that uh, encourages. Um, cycling and, and, and walking and building a w more walkable communities. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's really um, a two-pronged approach. This has been an important year for, me, for you, both personally and professionally, and it's going to um, December 1st is your birthday. Right, So right. that'll kind of end the year of activities. Uh, right. Tell me how you're going to celebrate it. Well, that's a good question because um, the Free Press is planning to have a celebration and invite readers and others who have 
follow the series. Just like an open party? A kind of an open party, although we're go- it's going to have to be limited because of the um, the space. But okay. we're going to have it at the Motor City on December 1. That's so very exciting. mark that date on the calendar. The um, ticket price is going to be $60. Okay. But a part of that uh, um, profit or actually all of the, the profit will go to um, Enough Said, which is another organization that you may have heard about, another effort that's being led by um, Kim Worthy, um, Kim Trent, and others to um, have rape kits investigate, uh, rape kits um, and rapes uh, uh, um, investigated in okay. the city. Um, and one of the reasons that I was very interested in, in um, being a part of that is that I covered an article, or covered a story, a press conference that involved a group of African American women coming together and saying, we need to do something about the fact that there are thousands of rape kits that have been in storage and not been investigated. And one of their main points is that women can't be healthy and whole if they are scared and um, and fearful. I abs- and fearful. And if they have come forward to um, to report a rape, then the least we can do is see that these women investigated and do the invest- kids and test the DNA ex- exactly, and do what they're supposed to do. Exactly. So um, this will be a way to seize the days and again um, give back. And I'm looking forward to that. And I hope that that your listeners will mark that date on the That's calendar. We'll be exciting. announcing it in the free press soon, um, probably in early um, to mid November. So all I think of that's the a wonderful way will, will to there. celebrate the culmination of this. What is what is the sort of the most significant event that's happened for you personally and professionally? You know, it's been a whole year for you with this seize the days. What's been the thing that really stood out for you that really touched you? Hmm. I think of all of the things related to this series, it has to be the um, the bike ride from Selma to Montgomery. That was it? That I was the that defining that moment? That was, I think that was the, the hi- probably the highlight. And so unexpected, um, huh? Right, because it, it wasn't planned. Um, I mean, it wasn't a part of my initial um, um, countdown. It, mm-hmm. it came up, and we were able to make it happen. And let me just say one, of the, one thing, too, about that. So many people think that um, if they can't um, do something um, if they can't complete something, then they fail. They failed, right. Um, and it keeps people from actually doing it stuff. It keeps people from doing it. From starting. That Exactly. The Selma to Montgomery bike ride was my highlight. But I ended up having to get off the bike um, at one point. Why? Because um, there were so many hills. I was exhausted. It was, I was a bumpy little it, ride. It, it was a, oh, yeah. It was a bumpy ride. It was early in the biking season, so uh, despite training, I wasn't ready for those hills. But there was a blessing even in getting off the bike. Um, if I hadn't gotten off the bike and gotten on the bus, I wouldn't have met these other people who were on the bus as well right. to tell them you know, about Viola Luizo. So um, I learned from that that even in what you see as a setback, Right, there, what you perceive as a setback may not always be It may be not there. be a setback, exactly. I, I think that, that it was kind of an important lesson that, yeah, you might stop, but get back on. I ended up getting back on the bike, you know, after, after kind of uh, getting myself <laughs> together. Um, I was able to get back and, and on and, and finish and bike on into to Montgomery. That is so. a beautiful story, absolutely beautiful. I am absolutely delighted. I'm delighted how we met. Oh, and so am I. I'm delighted how we met on your bike. Yes. And I'm absolutely delighted that you were able to share this experience with us. And I'm looking forward to coming to your birthday party. I'm looking on forward December to you being your countdown. here, too. I can't wait to come. Um, we're Our show is ending. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to our our. Uh, our guest today, Cassandra Spratling, who is a writer, who is lifestyle driven like we are, who is counting down to her 60th birthday with a lot of activities that she's chronicled in the Detroit Free Press. Um, I'm really, really glad you're here. I just I just think it's great. I think it's nice. Well, um, thank you very much. It's, um, it's really an honor and a pleasure for me to be here. And I love what you're doing as well. Right. So we're going to conclude today for Detroit Nation Lifestyle Driven. And as always, achieve your personal best, then beat it. See you next week.
Detroit Nation with Dr. V. Elaine Arterberry, driving the nation to health, beauty, and wellness. Lifestyle driven.